Hey y'all, welcome back to Sarah Grace Cookie Company. Today I'm filming part two of how to start your cookie decorating business. So I filmed this video when I first started my channel about how I started my cookie decorating business and for some reason or another it got cut off and there was only like a few minutes of it uploaded and what did upload I feel like kind of needs a refresh because this was all everything I filmed was pre-COVID pre-Facebook algorithm update craziness um, and so there are a lot of things that I feel like I need to clarify and sort of refresh for you as we're starting a new year and as I've kind of progressed in my own cookie business. We're going to talk about the different ways you can make money from cookies. You don't have to do custom orders, but you can. That's one way to make money. And we're going to talk about some of the different ways that you can do that and some of your options when it comes to how to structure your decorated sugar cookie business. Another thing we're going to talk about is deciding on your order taking systems, your order taking limits, what you are comfortable with, and how you're going to accept those custom orders if you take them. That's kind of a continuation of the first one of how your cookie business is structured. Get about the basic policies you need to have in place that goes along with those systems. Just, you know, how people are going to pay you, when they're going to pay you, um, your returns, exchanges, all that basic business stuff. Um, and we're also going to talk about how to get your first orders. So that's one of the biggest challenges in starting a cookie decorating business is how in the world do I let people know I'm making these cookies and how do I get enough orders to make it worth my time? So we're going to talk about how to get those first orders and that has changed a bit. If you first, if you've watched my first video, it is helpful information, but all that has kind of changed because Facebook has changed the way you, um, the way that business posts are seen. So you'll want to make sure and listen closely to this part because some things have changed since that was recorded. We're also finally going to talk about how to increase the amount of money you're making from decorated sugar cookies without increasing how many orders you're taking or the workload that you're taking on. Because if you want to increase your income, you'll quickly see that charging $20 a dozen is going to have you working round the clock. <laughs> so we're going to talk about how to make your income go up without making your kitchen and your life crazy. <laughs> I'm going to give you some helpful resources for starting your business. I'm going to tell you some things that helped me and some things I regret and would do differently um, now that I have stopped taking custom orders. So a little bit about my cookie business. Right now, I no longer take custom orders because I am spending all my time, I'm full time running the SG Cookie Academy membership. And that's a membership for ladies who want to learn how to decorate sugar cookies. And I'm spending all my time uh, creating content for y'all and for them and teaching there. So there are a few different ways that you can make money from making custom sugar cookies at home. I'm not going to get into all the cottage food law and business law and all that because it varies so much from state to state. But if you're interested in that, you can call your local health department. You can usually just Google it and you'll be able to find any information you need. But do check and make sure everything's on the up and up and get all your cottage food stuff together before you get started. Now, one of the most common ways to make money with custom sugar cookies is by doing custom orders. Um, just by having an order form and accepting different types of orders. And we can get into that all day long and talk about minimum orders and um, how many you take, that kind of thing. But today I'm just going to say that you can make money with custom orders. However, custom orders are not the only way to make money with sugar cookies. You can also do things like pre-orders and pop-ups. If you don't feel that your schedule would be conducive to taking custom orders or you're worried that it would be too much for you, you can always decide to create cookies for a pre-sale. This is like having a bake sale every once in a while. A pre-sale is where you put out pictures of different cookie designs and usually put them out in pictures with packaging so that people know that they can get these for gifts, for upcoming holidays and occasions, things like that. Some examples would be like Teacher Appreciation Day, 
Christmas, of course, and different holidays like that. You could put out some samples and allow people to choose, and you can have a great business by just doing pre-orders like that, and you can have people come pick them up at your home, or you could do even a little pop-up shop at a local business or a porch pop-up. So if you're doing a porch pop-up, what that means is just kind of setting out a table or a little shelf or rack or something, and you decide on the designs you're going to do, the different packages and things beforehand, and you can make good money doing that as well. Now you can do any combination of these things. You can do vendor fairs, and some states will even allow you to sell online on Etsy, so you can do predetermined designs and I've seen people selling those on Etsy and they look extremely profitable from the outside looking in. I'm personally not allowed to ship cookies because I live in Tennessee and it's uh, part of our cottage food laws do not permit shipping cookies across state lines. So that's one of the things to keep in mind, but in some states that is a possibility. So check into what's available in your state, what's allowed, and then just kind of Figure out and tweak that based on what your schedule and the lifestyle you want will allow. One of my main lifestyle goals was to not have to leave the house if I didn't want to because I had, at the time I started my business, I had twin one-year-old boys. They're now three. God, time goes so fast, y'all. But at the time, we had a pretty strict nap schedule that we needed to follow or we were going to be very cranky in the evenings and it made mom and dad a little bit tired if we didn't see to that nap schedule pretty precisely. So one of the things that I wanted out of my cookie business was to not have to leave the house if I didn't want to and load up my babies, mess up their nap schedule, all that junk. Um, I did arrange pick up with several people where I met them in town or um, where I was able to meet up with them or they came to the house or met me where I was in Florence and that's fine. But one of my lifestyle goals was not having to leave the house if I don't want to. So I made one of my policies that orders needed to be picked up. I also uh, did porch pop-ups. I did pop-ups at a local boutique and classes. Cookie classes are a great way to make money from cookie decorating. You don't have to be the most skilled cookie decorator to host a cookie class. People just come for fun. They're not coming to learn. And, well, they may be. If they are, that's fine. If they're coming to learn and start their own business, it'll get them a good start. But you don't have to have these amazing, super cookier skills to host a class. You just have to be able to make the icing, make the cookies, have all the materials provided for everyone, and organize the experience in a way that's fun and enjoyable for the people who are attending. That's one of those things that's kind of more of a high profit margin thing. You can charge a little bit more for an experience than you can for an actual cookie that someone would walk away with. It is a little bit more time intensive. You have to do a bit more advertising, a bit more prep, but I think it's well worth it because if you do that prep leading up to it, you can make quite a bit in that small span of time where it would take you a bit longer to make that amount of money doing pop-ups, pre-orders, or um, custom orders. Another one of the upsides of classes is it's something that you can do in person or virtually. So if you wanted, if for some odd reason we was to have another shutdown, which I hope to goodness we don't, but if your baking orders are suddenly stopped like it was last year around April, I'm filming this in May of 2021, so I'm looking back at the pandemic not so fondly. <laughs> We're almost out, y'all. We're almost there. Um, <laughs> but if for some reason your orders were to completely stop because you're not allowed to host live events anymore, like in the event of a pandemic, then you would be able to host a class online. When you're starting a cookie business, you want to think about how many orders you'll realistically be able to take in a week. For example, I would only take four dozen cookies a week and I would charge accordingly so that I was making the income I wanted to make while only doing a certain number of orders. So four dozen was plenty for me to feel like I was able to focus on those cookies and do a really good job with them and still have a life and <laughs> see my children. Um, when I was taking every order that came my way, 
I was just staying up late at night. I felt like none of the cookies were turning out the way I wanted them to. It just kind of became really chaotic really quickly. So setting limits to how many orders and how many dozen you'll take in a week and sticking to those limits really firmly is hard at first because you want to take every order that comes your way. Um, you might be scared that that person will go to your competition and they won't come back to you next time, but if they're meant to be your customer, they will come back. Even if you're not able to take their order this time, just say, I'm so sorry, I'm booked up, thank you for thinking of me, and recommend the other cookie lady in your town. If the, you know someone who can meet that need for the customer who's just messaged you, recommend them because a customer will always appreciate you helping them solve their problem and get their need met, whether it's by you or by someone else. There is plenty of business to go around, girls. We don't need to think of each other as competition. It's Courtney Carey from Bakery Tea Co. who says community over competition, and she's so right. If we help each other get orders, it will always come back around because when your cookie or friend in your town that you might think of as competition right now has a week where she's completely booked up or when she's going to Disney World or when she has a sick baby, who do you think she's gonna call? the girl who recommended her when she was booked. So make sure you're recommending your cookie friends and stick to those limits that you set for yourself. You'll be a happier person. If you've got kiddos, you'll be a happier mama and your cookies will be higher quality because you're not making yourself crazy and stressed and staying up all night every night. I've been there and I've done that. <laughs> Just trust me. Do as I say, not as I did. So when you start a cookie decorating business, you need an order taking system. I tried about every order taking system in the book, um, paper planners, Google Calendar, Notes app, all the things. <laughs> the two that I liked the best were my Google Calendar and Trello. Now I'm going to be coming out with a video soon to show you exactly how I did, if it's not already up, if you're watching this a little while after I film this then it's probably already up but if you're watching this when it first comes out then just know that I will be coming out with a video soon where I show you my exact order taking system the main thing you need to know when it comes to an order taking system is you need to be able to record it wherever you are so if you're doing it in a paper planner which I don't prefer because I hate having to remember to take a planner with me it needs to go with you everywhere because if you see um, Miss Sally Mae at the Walmart and she says, oh hey, you're making these beautiful cookies. Let me get two dozen for my daughter's bridal shower next week. You need to be able to pull out whatever you record your orders in and record it then and there. Um, if you get a text while you're in the pickup line at school, you need to be able to record it then and there. So that's why I prefer something on my phone. Um, or like a mobile app. Google Calendar is perfect for that. You just need to record who it's for and maybe like a little snippet of their contact information or how they contacted you. That way you can go back to the message or the conversation later. You need to record how many you're going to be making, that kind of thing. And you just need to decide on one system that you're going to use to record each and every order. You'll also need to consider how you'll take payment. Are you going to do Venmo, PayPal, Stripe, all of the above? Are you going to allow people to prepay or will it be pay at pickup? Will you take cash? <laughs> Those are all some considerations you need to think about and if you will even take an order before a deposit is made. Um, I know a lot of cookie decorators who do not do deposits. I think the majority of cookie decorators now are requesting at least half down payment deposit to reserve the date on their calendar, which I think is very sensible and a wise idea. Um, I never really had trouble collecting payment because I live in a super small community. Most people who order cookies from me will see me at church the next Sunday. So I've never really had any issues with payment or anything like that. But I've heard of people who have, so you hear one or two of those stories and it makes you a little nervous and it's something to think about when you're creating your policies. These are all things that you want to get laid out ahead of time. And as you're thinking about your policies and all those systems and things that need to be in place for any business, but especially a cookie decorating business, I also want you to think about your pricing. 
This is the touchy subject that none of us really like to talk about, but cookie decorating is so time consuming. The thing that you need to remember is you are not charging for the flour, sugar, and butter that's in this mixer. You are not charging for your ingredients or your supplies. That is a factor in your pricing, but what you're charging for is your time and your skill. You are providing a service to your community and to your customers more so than you're providing a product. While yes, you are handing them a physical product, you need to think of your cookie pricing more as a service than a product. They are getting something to hold in their hand and have, but your time and your skill and your knowledge are what is most valuable about that transaction to them. Because if you just charge for the ingredients or just a little bit more than it costs you to make them, you're going to get frustrated really quickly with the amount that you're earning per hour. Because when you think about all the time that goes into these sugar cookies, you really need to be charging at least $35 plus per dozen, in my opinion, to be able to come out and not be working for like sweatshop wages. My opinion is at least $5 a cookie. When you're starting out, you can start a little lower than that and go up just to kind of build your customer base, but definitely don't start lower than like $25, $30 a dozen, in my opinion. I made the horrible mistake of starting at $30 for the first dozen and $15 for any, dozen, for any subsequent sets after that, $15 per dozen after the first. So. It didn't take any less work to do those subsequent dozen cookies. It didn't take any less time or any less energy and effort and I was just working for a little of nothing and it I ended up getting frustrated really really quickly. So I quickly turned around, raised my prices, um, was working less, earning more and it made life a whole lot easier. Now let's talk about getting your first orders. Now that you've decided how much you're going to charge, how you're going to take orders when you get them, and how many orders you're able to take in a week, you need to know how to get those orders. So in my previous video, I talked a lot about setting up a Facebook business page, doing some giveaways, posting all those pictures of your cookies that you've been practicing on, and all that still holds true. It's still good advice, except there have been some major changes in how Facebook shows people posts. So if you're making a post from your business page, Facebook is not showing everyday people business page posts as much anymore. So Facebook is now giving priority or pushing to the top posts from friends and family, from groups, and video posts. So now I want to kind of amend the advice that I gave you in my first video and tell you that if you're going to do a giveaway on your Facebook page, I recommend doing it through a live video. Go live on Facebook from your business page or from your personal page. Um, if you have lots of personal contacts who you feel would be good fits or your target customer, Absolutely, use your personal page as your vehicle to advertise. You do not have to have a business page, um, but you can if you want to. And you can also start a private group or a public group. Um, this is kind of allowing people to opt in and say, I do want to see your post. Because most of the time people will say, oh, I wish I'd known about that pre-order. I didn't see your post. And so you want some way that they can opt in. Um, you could even do an email list if you want to go into that. You can do an email list without having to have a website. Um, check out the platform convert kit if you want to try an email list. But you need some way to contact every customer and make sure that they're seeing it every time. Because if you're relying on Facebook to show every post you make to every person who likes your business page, it's not going to get seen. When you make a post on your business page, there are only maybe 10 to 20% of the people who like your page 
who are going to see that. So don't rely on Facebook to contact your customers with a post because it's not going to be seen by all of them. Make sure they have a way to opt in and to tell you that they want to hear from you. Whether that's through having them join a Facebook group, whether that's having them join your email list so that you can email them pre-order information or sales or anything that you have going on to kind of like your Christmas orders and things. Um, Whatever that is, you want to make sure that you have a way of getting in touch with your customers. Now, if you want to, a lot of custom, a lot of cookie decorators are using Instagram for their marketing now, and I think it's a great tool for local business. Facebook is also a great tool for local business. It's a good thing to have. You want to make sure you have a presence on Facebook because people will find you there. Um, whether it's through your personal page or your business page, just make sure that it is known that you make cookies somewhere in the Facebook world. Um, you also want to check out Instagram. Instagram is a great tool for local marketing, and I'm going to take you through how I recommend getting lo local customers through Instagram. These are some things that I picked up and learned from Gary V. He's a marketing expert. And I also learned a lot in a lot through the Sugar Cookie Marketing Facebook group. I think it's closed now with plans to open back up soon. But you can follow Sugar Cookie Marketing on Instagram and they have lots of great tips. Um, Courtney Carey from Bakery Tea Co. also has great marketing tips if you want to check her out. That's not really my specialty. I'm more of like how to make the cookies. But I'm going to tell you what I've learned and the main things that have helped me. On Instagram, you want to have lots of pictures of your beautiful cookies, of course. That way people can kind of get a look at your work. I'm talking pictures from different angles, pictures of you holding it up in your kitchen. Like, you don't have to make a thousand sets to get a bunch of pictures of cookies. You just want to make sure that you have a nice little gallery for people to look at when they come to your profile. Now, once you have that, you want to get people to your profile. And the way that you attract local customers in Instagram is to use the location tags and location hashtags. So every post that you make, you need to be tagging it with your location or the area that you want to sell to. If you live in a really tiny town like I do, um, you can tag it with your small town tags, of course, because you want your local people knowing what you do, but also with maybe some areas that are a little bit larger and um, would have a little bit more of a market for what you're doing. So if you have a larger town that's near you where people might be willing to meet you halfway or come and pick up from you, then definitely tag in that area as well. So when you're making that post, you want to go and add your location to the post and that will help people see you. Another thing you want to do is add location specific hashtags. Hashtag Collinwood, Tennessee, hashtag whatever county you're in. We're in Wayne County, Tennessee. So add all those tags, do a little research, go up to the top of Instagram and find some location hashtags and add those to your post. Now, you want to draw people to your page so that they're able to follow you and see your post. The way that you do that to find local people who can come to your page and see what you're posting, and this is a really great tip that I picked up from Gary Vaynerchuk if you want to look him up on YouTube. You go to your location or your location hashtag and then you click on it and you go to recent. Then you go and comment on every post that you possibly can. Try to spend maybe 15 minutes a day or just whenever you get a chance commenting on everyday people's posts. You can comment on businesses' posts. You can go on the main feed of that hashtag and do the most popular ones as well. But that is a great way to get a lot of new local followers who will be seeing everything that you're doing, learning about your business, and starting to recommend you to their friends and family. Social media is a great way to drum up business for your cookie decorating business, and it's one of my favorite methods for getting your business going and starting to make some sales. However, social media is not the only way to make sales and get orders. If you feel like you're kind of banging your head against the wall when it comes to social media, don't stress about it. You don't have to use social media to get orders. Make a few business cards or write your contact information down on a sticky note and take an example set of cookies or just a few little mini cookies to local establishments for people to try and enjoy. 
So some examples of that might be taking it to the bank for some of the tellers to try, to a school for the teachers. Of course, check in with whoever's there and make sure it's okay for you to leave things like that. But those people will try them and enjoy them and they'll think of you next time they need cookies for an event. And not only will they think of you, they'll also tell other people. I mean, if someone dropped off cute, yummy cookies at your workplace, wouldn't you go home and tell your husband, I had the best cookie today. It was shaped like a heart and it had cute sprinkles on it and et cetera, et cetera. They would tell others about your business. And that's the goal. Word of mouth advertising is the best way to get more and more orders. And next time one of those people who you've taken some example cookies to is telling there it has a friend who needs cookies for an event, they can recommend you. So that's a great way to start getting orders as well. Now your calendar is probably gonna fill up pretty fast. Cookies are very in demand right now. And if you have high quality work and you're getting the word out, letting people know that you bake cookies, then you're probably gonna have a pretty full calendar pretty quickly. When you see that you're booked up for long stretches of time, that is a surefire sign that it's time to raise your prices a little bit. Raising your prices is something that a lot of cookie decorators, including myself, when I was making custom orders, get a little freaked out about. <laughs> so if you're noticing that you're selling out at every pre-sale, or you're noticing that you're having custom orders booked completely up every single week and you're constantly having to refer people, you need to raise your prices. Your work is very in demand. Your work is high quality. So you deserve to be well paid for it. And so you want to make sure that you're conveying the quality of what you're making with your pricing. Lots of people ask me, how do I raise my prices? A lot of people think it's this really big process that you have to make a big announcement and you have to change all your pricing menus and everything all in one day and you have to like apologize to your customers like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm raising my prices. That's not the case at all, y'all. <laughs> It can be done very subtly and without much drama. I learned a lot about uh, incrementally raising your prices in a reasonable and comfortable way from Miss Christy Wright. If you're interested in the business side of things, if you're wanting to start a business that fits your life, Miss Christy Wright is a great one to look into. I was a member of her academy for a little while and I really thought it was helpful. So she taught me a lot of the things I'm about to share with you when it comes to price raising check into her, listen to her podcast if you're interested in that. So when it's time to raise your prices and when you feel that you need to start up in your game a little bit, what you'll want to do is set a date and from that date forward, you're just going to quote your prices higher. I'm not saying go up $20 at a time. I'm also not saying you should go up a dollar at a time. I think five to $10 is a comfortable range for incrementally raising your prices. And if you're staying booked, if you're getting orders, if it's not the middle of a pandemic, then you should be doing this probably assessing every quarter to see if you need to do price raise. Now, once you get to a certain cap, of course, you're gonna wanna limit it. Um, but if you're still getting tons of orders and still staying in demand, just go up as much as you feel comfortable with. Um, and from that date that you set, any customer that messages you, you're just going to quote them that higher price that you're going to start quoting from this date. And make sure you keep up with who you quoted or when they were, uh, when they ordered. That way you can keep up with the price you quoted them and stay true to what you said you would charge. Um, but you don't have to make a big Facebook announcement about I'm raising my prices. You don't have to apologize for it. It's part of business. Y'all, I am by no means a business expert. I'm just sharing the things that helped me in my cookie business and some of the things that were really or felt really specific to decorated sugar cookies that um, made the difference in my business. I hope these have been helpful to you. If you're interested in learning how to decorate custom sugar cookies, so that you can have a fulfilling hobby, a side hustle, or a full-fledged home business, then definitely check out my channel. Make sure to like and subscribe. And you can also learn more about the online classes that I offer where I teach people how to make custom decorated sugar cookies from scratch at my website, saragracecookieco.com. 
Thank y'all for watching today. Good luck in your cookie business or home baking business endeavors. I hope it goes extremely well for you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.